Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as a one-hand mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. We have here a Sears Craftsman T2400 tractor, and I'm showing you in this position because we are draining oil. I'm going to show you how to take off the engine today. So everybody out there who has an engine that needs to come off um, one of these tractors, it's going to be pretty close on a lot of the Sears Craftsmans. Uh, I have it in this position because I wanted to show you that when I drain the oil, especially when I take a motor off, I try to have it leaning and I know you probably can't even see it from the video lean shot but I have a jack in the front I also have a piece of a six by six wood in the back of the tire in the rear and this one is a pretty easy drain this is actually a quick disconnect drain that you just put a little tube on a lot of the tractors have that now which is very nice some of them just have a plug here some of them have a, an adapter pipe that comes off but I'm just showing you that you should if you can lean your tractor and if you have another if you have like an hour you can just spend just to drain the oil out and make sure it's very empty before you take the engine off it'll save you a little bit of time as far as a uh, mess and the oil coming out of motor when you take it apart if you're going to take it apart so I'm actually taking this one apart because it actually has a bad cam in it and that is going to be on another video as far as uh, how you can tell if you have a bad cam so okay the oil is now drained I'm going to put this on my engine uh it's not an engine stand i'm going to put this on my lift that uh it's a chain hoist lift that it gets it up in the air a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and show you how to uh, disassemble the the motor to the point where we can take it right off i'll be right back with you okay before i put it up on the engine or the, the uh, chain hoist i want to show you the model of this machine and i'm going to show you some tools i use okay so the model of this machine is a 917 two zero three eight three zero for anybody out there that has the exact same model but a lot of these models the numbers will change just a little bit and then i want to show you the tools over here that i use and this i'm pretty sure this is all of them and from right to left as you know um the quarter inch battery operated uh, ratchet i use this is my joy i, I get a lot of stuff done quickly with this uh, this is a 3 8 ratchet a couple 3 8 extensions you can also use a quarter inch ratchet and a quarter inch extension. You definitely need a 3 8 socket. You need a 5 8 socket. That's actually a half inch drive. We also are going to be using that with this electric impact to take the bolt out of the double pulley on the engine. I would definitely recommend either an electric impact or a pneumatic impact to take off that bolt just because it's easier than using like a pipe wrench to stop the motor from turning when you take it off couple wrenches that you're going to need um you may need a 3 8 wrench you may not need it depending on um, the socket that we can use to uh 3 8 and 7 16 so um, this is a multi-wrench here where to take the starter locking nut off the cable you need to be careful this is a very thin 7 16 wrench okay so it just gets in a very tight spot for me i use that one you'll need a quarter inch allen wrench and this is just a t allen wrench you can get whatever allen wrenches you have just make sure it's a quarter inch i have a pair of, pair of vice grips and i did put some tape on the end so you don't make the little the little teeny grooves in your fuel line because you need to pinch the fuel line off so i put tape on this it's a good way to it's like a fuel line clamper so it doesn't make a mess but it also clamps it all fine pair of pliers a half inch to three or three eighths to half inch or half inch to three eighths to however you want to put it this is an adapter that goes on my half inch gun that allows me to put on a a uh, three eighth socket that goes on my impact um, but i may or may not use this one also this is a swivel socket that you guys most likely will not have you can just use a straight nine sixteenths but when you do put the bolts back into the engine when you're re, re uh, mounting it you got to make sure that you put in the bolt straight um, and of course my clip tool which actually works out great for a lot of different things so that's always in there and you may need a flashlight in fact you probably will need a flashlight okay so i'm going to also show you right now that to take the hood off on this particular model this is a very uh strange one versus all the craftsmen that i do work on you actually have to take a pin out of here and slide this sideways to get the hood off some of them are easier and some of them aren't but you want to make sure you take off your light connection first all right so you should just pull out so you pull that off and then if you see over here on this side, you actually have a pin that actually holds the hood from falling off, which is actually pretty nice. Take off the pin, take off the washer, and then now you have to slide this bracket, which is the hood, that way to take it off. So we're going to slide it off right now. Okay, there it goes. Slide it off, and then away it goes. So when you put it back on, you're just going to slide it back on the same way you got it off, and just put the clip pin back in again. It's actually uh, pretty nice for uh, Sears to come out with that. I actually like it. And then we're gonna put this up on the, the chain 
right here. This is how I put it up in the air. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to get everything. It's a little more like waist level for me. And you can uh, do what you gotta do to get the engine off, but I'm gonna show you how we take it off here. Be right back with you. Okay, I put the tractor up where I like it, and this is how I am gonna take off the engine. You guys at home will have to figure out a way to get the, the motor. Just, I mean, you can do it all on the ground, except for the pulley. You'd have to jack up the front end a little bit to get the pulley off. First thing you want to do before you get anywhere any any further into this is we want to take the battery disconnect, okay? So you definitely want to disconnect. I disconnect the positive side. You can disconnect the negative or positive side. You know, just as long as you have these terminals not touching the battery, just in case anything happens up front with electrical wires, which you most likely won't, but it's good to disconnect the battery before you start. Um, a lot of the engines had this cowing right here. Some of them don't, so you may need to skip this process, but... 3.8 socket on my electric tool and there's a, a washer and a bolt that you have to make sure you don't lose these things and there's one on one side I'm just going to take this one off real quick on the air side and that shield should come right off all right next step we want to do is since we're on this side we're going to start by taking off the, uh, the this one is a newer style so it has like an emissions line on it which is basically just goes to the gas tank and it will cycle the the air gases through to the tank okay so that's off and i just use this pull for that now we do have to crimp off the fuel line which would be taking that off and that's when my pliers come in that have the needle nose pliers with a piece of tape on it so we don't have a uh, there's lines in it that everybody doesn't like we also need the uh, pair of pliers Forgot. pair of pliers to take off this clamp here okay just take down it away and then i use my tool here my clip tool and I just kind of push it off and a lot of times you don't even need this tool i'm just very used to using it and i don't want to mess up the fuel line take it off you're probably going to have a mess you might want to put it up out of your way just make sure your clamp is clamped good okay we also need to take off this uh that is a throttle cable slash choke cable now you can use a black magic marker if you'd like to get this close okay so you can if you mark it you'll get close you'll get close to where it's supposed to be but ultimately you need to adjust your if it has a choke a man or not a manual choke if it has a automatic choke when you put the throttle look at the throttle over here okay so this is the choke here you put up on fast and you have choke okay so let me show you down here Okay, now the throttle is on fast. So this is about where this is at. And the choke is right here. This is a lever. It's hard to point this out, but this is a lever right here that moves back and forth that will push this lever right here. It's like a, it's like a wire U, all right? But that actually pushes in and out. So it's choke on and choke off. If you look over here, there's a choke mechanism right here into the carburetor. So if you look at that, I'm gonna move it. So choke on, choke off. Okay, you need to have this throttle set to when you go up on fast on your throttle, there's an indent. So you're up on fast there. And then when you go to choke position, this paddle right here, this paddle is going to push against this. And then like that, that's on choke. So that's full choke and it's actually all the way on choke. All right, you have to make sure that this is set properly when you put it back on that your choke is working properly i hope i explained that good enough because this is basically just taking off the engine all right so to take this cable off five sixteenths here or i think there's a star it could be uh you can also use a torx screwdriver i think in that too a lot of them are torx a lot of the older ones were actually just five sixteenths and then i try not to take it all the way out so it doesn't fall off pull this out of the way this is actually an l bend in this in the cable right here so that it'll be an l-bend so you have to pull it out like a 90 degrees and then it comes out okay so you see that l-bend just make sure you get it back in there correctly without bending up everything just put that off to the side okay so everything on this side has been disconnected so now we have to go to the other side and we have to take off the muffler and the starter line and the electrical okay okay so on this side we have starter cable starter cable here that has to disconnect now the reason why i have a skinny 7 16 and then a regular 7 16 well this is a variable this is three it's a one size 7 16 this is two 7 16 nuts and the reason why i have a skinny one is because i like to get behind you have to hold 
this nut right here. So the nut that attaches to the starter, if this is if this is loose, you don't want to tighten that too much. That actually you can ruin the brushes inside if you tighten this bolt too tight. And if it's loose and you try to unscrew the outside one here, you can actually unbolt the insides and you can mess them up. So you don't want to do that either. So you, I'm going to hold this with a skinny wrench, which is seven sixteenths, and I'm going to dis, I'm going to unscrew the outside one. So you want to hold that inside nut stationary. You do not want to have that move. You can tighten it a little bit if it's loose, but just a little bit. Don't go too far because you will ruin your starter. And once you get that off, you can put the nut to the side. Now, this nut is usually a nut with a little washer on it that's actually has little grabbers on it. That's original from the factory. That's a nice feature because when you put this together, it actually holds it on tight. When you tighten this back on again, make sure you're holding this nut on the inside. Make sure you, that does not move and then tighten this. And then as long as that's snug, you're fine. But then make sure you tighten this onto it and keep two wrenches on there just to make sure that it doesn't get messed up. Okay, so the electrical here, we have two plugs. One doesn't look like we need to take it apart. This one here connects to all the engine stuff. It's pretty straightforward. Most tractors had that harness on it, which is nice to just disconnect it like that. Some had just a little, a couple more few, uh, lines. Some had less lines. Disconnect that. So we have that wire done, that wire done. That's pretty much it for the electrical on this side. Now we have to, before I pull these motors, I take out the muffler pipe. And most of the mufflers, except for the real old ones, is just a tube that goes into the muffler. And this tube will actually come out of this muffler. Now this is where your Allen, quarter inch Allen wrench comes in. And you definitely wanna use a new gasket when you take these off. And basically it's just, now some of the old ones had, instead of Allen heads, they actually had, I think they were 7 16 uh, as far as the heads on them. But most of them are Allen heads. And you pull that out and don't lose it. Get this guy out, this guy. Now this pipe should come right out. And that will allow me to pull the engine without pulling the muffler. You just take the pipe out, just like that. Just make sure the pipe goes back in. The muffler is actually here. I mean, you can take it off if you want, but there's no need to. All right, so we have that off. Now we have to go underneath the machine. And the first thing I would do is put the clutch in, which is on the other side. So what we're doing is we're taking all the belt tension off the transmission drive belt by pushing this clutch in and locking your brake on. So you wanna push the clutch in, lock the brake on, that'll get, get rid of all the tension on the transmission drive belt to the pulley. So this is where my, either your pneumatic or your, pneumatic or electric impact to get the pulley underneath the engine off okay and that's up front here okay so it's a little hard to see under here but this is the double pulley if you guys out there have electric pulleys it's going to be a little bit uh different than this but most of the sears craftsman factors this is non-electric pto this is a manual engagement so this is a double pulley system if you don't have an impact to take this bolt off which is a 5 8 socket um, some people have told me they put pipe wrenches on top and so be it just be careful uh, that you don't bend up something okay so i'm gonna pull this off now it's a pretty long bolt all right there you go most of the newer engines they've actually put they put never seize on these things now, so these are not hard to get off anymore. They used to be real bare back in the day, uh, but now you just bring it down off of there, it just drops right off the transmission drive pulley. Just remember that this little divot right here in the side of this pulley, that's actually a keyway that's pressed into it from the factory. And if you look inside there, that's, there's actually the keyway that's been pressed in. So they kind of made this, um, they just pressed it and when they printed this out. So the keyway has to go up into the keyway shaft on the engine, which is up inside here. Okay, now I'm gonna put this tractor up a little bit higher so we can get a better view at the four bolts that we're gonna take off. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now I'm underneath the tractor. It's a little bit higher up so you guys can see all this. So we just took this pulley off and here's the transmission drive belt. You can pretty much just leave that sit there. Okay, we have four bolts. We have one here, one here, one here, and one here. They're 9 16 and I'm gonna use my swivel. And the reason why I'm using a swivel, you can use a straight socket on here, but this is a little tricky. You can get it with a straight socket. Okay, now this one over here is a little more further in and you may need to, you know, you can use the socket, you just may strip the end of the, 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 the bolt up there. You don't wanna round it. If you round it, you're in trouble. Now you can take, you can probably take these brackets out of the way because it looks like they bolted aside here. So that's definitely what I would do. 
take off these brackets and, and pry sure it's a half inch or nine sixteenths and then you can get your socket up in there more straight like um this one too will come off so you should de probably definitely take those off i don't need to take them off because i have a swivel and i'm not saying everybody should have one but if you do just use a swivel it's nine sixteenths i'm going to put this the reason why i had all those adapters is because i adapted from half inch to three eighths my my uh, swivel socket is a three eighths impact nine sixteenths and i'm going to take this off here Some of these come off very easily, some of them come off extremely hard, and a lot of times I drop them and I have to go fishing for them in the frame. So I can just get this off real quick and it's probably just gonna drop down. But you get the drift. Yep, just drop that one down, I just dropped on the floor. That one's down. Now be careful now, since I have it up in the air, it's gonna, the engine's gonna wanna try to, try to slide back. And I'm okay with that because it only has a couple inches to go before it hits the gas tank and it's not gonna hurt anything. But you gotta be careful you don't hurt the thread by having a lot of pressure on the bolt. And I've done this long enough to know that what I'm doing right now is not gonna hurt the threads. Okay, so last bolt out. So that engine technically right now is loose. And I'm gonna get back to you when this, I'm gonna put the tractor down on the ground and then we're gonna show you, I'm gonna lift it from the ground to the table. Okay, so it's down off my chain hoist and right now you can see we have everything disconnected, all the bolts underneath, there's only four of them. We have the electrical wires taken off, the, the starter wires taken off, cables are off, fuel lines off, the emissions line is off. Okay, so now, be very careful. I don't recommend everybody doing this. I'm not sure exactly what the weight is on these things. You gotta be careful. All right, so I'm gonna see you at the boom. Bench. There it is, on the table, all said and done. That was a pretty straightforward job. I know some of the Craftsman tractors are all a little bit different, so you may come across a little couple different things. Uh, just so you know, the reason why this is actually on the bench is because it does have a bad cam, and I diagnosed it down to that, so we're gonna be taking this apart. Uh, at this point, um, I do appreciate everybody watching my videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.